just here with Oakley, and we're going to be introducing him to the uh, prom caller here. So this is Oakley's first time. This is Oakley's first time with the prom caller. So we're going to be introducing him to him, and the way we like to do that is through a bit of a conditioning process, and the way we do that is through pressure and release. So the moment that Oakley feels pressure on this prom caller, we need to teach him how to shut that pressure off. And he's gonna shut it off by coming towards us and yielding to the direction of that pressure. So if I apply leash pressure this way, he's gonna feel that pressure, that tension around his neck from the prong collar. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna either pull into it and realize that doesn't work. And I'm gonna kind of apply gentle pressure back. And the moment he yields to that pressure, I'm going to release the pressure. We're gonna call that an active release. So I'm gonna kind of push the leash in to remove that, uh, that tension on the leash and create slack the moment he releases that pressure by turning towards me, so like this. Good boy. Good. So we're very gentle with that pressure. And then the moment he, uh, he he releases it, we're actively releasing that pressure as well. So the moment he starts to turn towards me, so right here again, pressure and release. Good boy. I'm marking it, and then we're going to reward him as well. Good boy. We're using some pretty high value food for this right now just to keep him nice and comfortable. And so what we're going to do with we condition the prong collar here is basically just move back and forth with him and uh, continuing continuing to apply this pressure and then releasing it good boy the moment he turns with me and what we should see is him start to avoid that pressure and again it goes into one of the topics that we talk about a lot which is escape and avoidance training or pressure and release training and so what the concept is there is he's learning to escape that pressure first right so when i apply pressure and he walks into it He's going to learn how to escape the pressure by yielding to it. Good boy. Good boy. By yielding to it. And then over a few repetitions, over the course of a few repetitions, we have some different treats mixed in here. You're going to see he starts to actually avoid, avoid that pressure altogether. Instead of escaping, he then begins to avoid it. And what that'll look like is him turning with me without hitting the end of that prong collar. Good. And that's kind of the whole purpose of training with the prong collar is to create get into that avoidance state where the dog is avoiding the pressure. Anytime you give a command or anytime you make a direction change, they're avoiding that pressure. And so, good boy, you're not having to use it. Good. Oh, he's doing quite well with this. He's, he pulls a lot in his slip leash. He doesn't mind choking himself out a little bit when it comes to his slip leash. So we opted the prong collar as the best option for this guy, especially since there's two huskies that are getting walked at the same time, often, oftentimes. So. Good boy. So right there, you can see it's a very quick amount of pressure that's applied, almost like a little pop on that leash. And then the moment he release, he comes towards me, I release that pressure, mark it with good, and then give him a reward as well. When I do, when I use the prompt collar here, something I'll point out is that we're always adding direction to it. So with the leash especially, when we're trying to communicate using something like a prong collar, we want to make sure there's direction behind our communication. So if I pull the prong collar straight back down along the spine here, there's not really any direction and you're going to see him get kind of confused and he's going to be not sure which way to move. But if I want to turn him this way, I'm going to apply the direction to that leash into the prong collar by pointing the leash and the prong collar this way. And whatever way the leash goes, Oakley's nose will follow. So whatever way the leash is pointed, good, the nose will follow that. And you can see he's trying to resist that pressure a little bit, but it's not the slip leash and he's realizing that. He's used to fighting into that slip leash, so when he feels that pressure, his first instinct is to dig into it a little bit further, right, and try to resist it. But with the prong collar, he's going to realize that that's, it's, it's futile to do that, it's not worth it, and it's just uh, it's too uncomfortable, the sensation for him to want to pull through. And that is, at the end of the day, that's how the prong collar works, is it's an uncomfortable, aversive sensation, and uh, that's how we stop behavior with dogs, right? They'll do things, they'll continue to do what's comfortable, and they'll stop doing what's uncomfortable. Good job. So in this case, pulling is going to be uncomfortable now. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good. Oh, good. Good. I don't know what he's sniffing up, but he's found something there. So now as we do this with him, we're just going to start walking around with him, doing some figure eights, doing some back and forth. Trying to find those opportunities where we can apply that pressure on the leash to let him learn that different, different situations are going to require him to uh, escape that pressure. Unless he sticks with me. Good job. Good boy. So now there's no pressure being applied, right? 
Really important with the prong collar, if we're using it as a form of communication, we can't be just yanking up on it and applying constant tension, because any tension or any pressure on the prong collar is supposed to be communication, and if it's not communicating with the dog, they're gonna get confused, you're gonna see them get stressed out by that, and it's not gonna have the effect that you want it to have. So we're gonna pop his nose up off the ground there by just giving him a quick snap on that prong collar, upwards. Good. Now same thing, you're going to turn, apply that pressure. He's turning with me, there's that avoidance right there, right? He's avoiding hitting the end of that prong collar. That's perfect. Good. Never applying constant tension. The nice, leash is nice and loose here. And I'll, I honestly, I'll teach my clients to hold the leash either like this or like this. And so what's happening here is I'm using this hand here to do all my communication with the prong collar. So all the communication is coming through my fingers right here, basically, right? If I want to pull them this way. See how I just close my fingers and that tension there through my fingers? That's what moves him forward, right? You can use your wrist for that as well. But you just don't want to see huge arm jerking function with the uh, prong collar. It can, be, it can be very gentle and very, very subtle with the prong collar. It's one of our favorite tools for that reason. Here's two fingers right here. Good boy. Right there, there's two fingers. Good job. Now when it comes to conditioning the prong collar, you can also add the sick man into this too. So when I stop, I apply upward pressure. Good. He releases that pressure by putting his butt down. Good boy. You might not want that. I got different treats mixed in here, so he's like picky once he gets. Nothing. Heel. Add in that heel command. Good. We're gonna come to that stop again and apply that upward pressure here. Good. And then we see him sit. Good boy. Heel. And we'll do a few repetitions of this. And again, this is the same concept of escape and avoidance because what's happening is pressure up, sit. Good. He's escaping the pressure right there. That was an escape of the pressure. Your pressure was applied at first. That pressure was applied first, and then I gave him the command as a form of direction to help him, uh, to help him complete that command, and then that pressure turned off the moment he completed the command. So again, that's the escape phase. He'll, and then after a few repetitions of that, if I say sit, he's going to avoid that pressure by immediately sitting. So again, same concept. If his nose goes down, I'm just going to pop up on the leash there, keep his nose up off the ground. He's trying to get distracted. He's trying to leave the conversation or not be involved in this lesson. And that's something Oakley has a bad habit of doing. He's trying to get out of these lessons. He doesn't really want to, he doesn't want to engage or work with you. He'll just say, okay, I'm done. And that's when you'll really see him go, boy, pulling this slip leash. He'll try to like yank, your, yank out of the room or whatever, or you know, go to where he wants to go with no regard for you or that tension he's feeling around his neck. Again, like sets and stuff on the ground. He'll pull all day to get to that stuff if he really feels like ignoring you. He'll, good. We're gonna pop on the prong collar there when I get that heel command just to get him moving to get him off of his butt. Using direction here even. Good. Applying that upward pressure, releasing it the moment he sits. Good boy. Heel. Very good. He's being reinforced twice, right? He's being reinforced by the removal sit, of the pressure. One form of reinforcement, good. Two forms of reinforcement, the food, good. Good job. Heel. Sit. Again, reinforcement, good. Reinforcement from food as well. 
reinforcement from that relief of pressure, and then reinforcement from the food as well. So two reinforcers there. Yep. Something I try to make very clear with the palm follower, especially these directional exercises, is again that direction. So I'll drop down so the leash is horizontal and point the leash in the direction I want the dog to go. Always using that leash for direction. So again, I want the dog to turn right, leash is pointed right, following you, you will flip the right, it's perfect. Exactly what we're looking for there. If I feel lagging, same thing, just a little pop on that palm collar. And again, you can see how my hand is positioned here. Right here, this is where all the control is happening. All control is happening through this, right here. This is how we're doing it. So, holding the leash just like this. You might see in certain situations, I'll hold the leash up here as well as I'm doing this, but if it, especially like right here. Good. See how effective that is to give a nice firm pop and keep that dog engaged with you. Especially when he starts to get distracted and maybe wander away or just really zone out like that, I'm gonna sneak away from him using the whole length of leash here. Good, and that's what we should see, it's right there, perfect. And again, that's just avoidance, right? He's avoiding that correction because he knows that following me is how we can avoid that. Picking up our pace a little bit here, we're gonna come to another stop here. Good. Marking and reinforcing. Good boy. Yeah, he likes that, eh? He likes that. Heel. Good. Good. Making sure he's not lagging too far behind here. Keeping that motivation up. 